Don't be rude. It's empty. Go be nice to the other droids. Don't you throw a paddy. Yeah. He was perhaps on the other side of that seat. Right, as you can see, we're back from DB UK, so R2s in pieces, choppers in pieces, and I got to tidy up. Um, I'm going to put R2 back together in a few minutes, but I'm not going to put Chopper back together. Uh, simply because I'm going to start animating the servos. It's easier to do it if he's not on his legs and the head's off. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of damage done to Chopper. Um, and that's from putting together. And I kind of knew that would happen anyway, because I haven't lacquered, you know, I haven't clear-coated any of the body. So... Um, when we get some dry weather again, because finally we're getting some rain on and off, um, I'll respray parts of it and fix it. Uh, I also found, uh, do you remember me mentioning a couple of episodes ago that this bit broke here and it was leaking liquid resin? Uh, turns out it's still leaking and this bit was sort of welded to it. Um, and even now it's, you know, you can see where it welded. Uh, I've cleaned it up and actually it's quite good in the way of. Um, you know, of, of weathering, making it look like an oil stain, 
but that's that's sticky and I'm gonna have to wash my hands. Um, so I'm gonna replace this arm. It's too heavy for the servo, um, and I just don't want it to keep leaking resin. Um, so that's gonna get replaced. Um, I'll probably already even show that. I'll probably just do it off camera, and then next time you see it, I'll have the new arm on there. I'm going to do Mike's new live action arm because I might as well. If I'm reprinting the arm, might as well put the new one on there. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I was getting a bit confused with these servos for the doors because if I just push that servo now, like that, that's as far as the door opens. Uh, now, I had another read the instructions and I made a mistake. The position the servo's in now, with that pointing up, that's the door that's the door's open position when it's closed it should be pointed off that way so I'm gonna have to take uh, I'm gonna have to take the servo out which means I need to um, take this off to be able to get to that screw there uh, which is annoying take the hinge out uh, and I don't know if you just heard the printer started going that's gonna be printing some new top hinges because obviously now the nylon that connects to there is too short because I cut it too short thinking I got it the right way around so now that's welded that means it's going to be so I'll show you on this one so yeah as it is welded so it's going to be a new top hinge for both doors make the length the right length and twist the servo horn back that way for the closed position and then up and probably just passed up is going to be open uh, which means the door should open further um, as you can see, I've got the mag tag working. That worked really well, um, but I've yet to test it with the servos working in there. So power to the lights is working fine. Uh, anything beyond that, I don't know yet. So I'm, I'm fairly sure it's okay. Um, everything else, the chopper performed brilliantly. You know, uh, apart from the scratches to the paintwork, which, as I said, I was totally expecting to happen. Uh, everything performed brilliantly. Um, even the replacement um, caster went, went really well. And yeah, yeah, you can see some marks on there, but yeah, you can see the layer lines. But honestly, once it's weathered, it's just going to look like it's old. I mean, chopper is old. Probably what? I think it's probably about seventy years old by the time of a soaker. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it, um, as you probably saw in the beginning part of the video, um, he had a good trundle around DB UK. Uh, lots of people asked questions about him and they were impressed with the fact they they thought I'd already printed Mike's live action chopper. Uh, not that I altered the existing one and printed the new part, you know, added the parts on. And I can already see on Facebook some people using these parts, which is really good to see. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. Uh, what else have I done? So what I have done uh, in testing, in did, did a bit of testing off camera, is I was gonna has got the the maestro working down there just to see what would happen, and um, it took me a while to work out what was going on. But I I could control the maestro from the computer fine. But as soon as I told the told the sketch to upload and told and then try to get the the Kyber to do anything, you know, from the controller, nothing would happen, and um, it would play it turned to play a sound and then associated with the sound should be an animation. It would play the sound, not do the animation, and then everything would just die. Um, this, you know, no sounds would work after that point. Basically, crashed the Kyber, and I couldn't work out what was going on. Now, at DB UK, there was a guy called Dave Stapley who has Johnny Five, um, so he's uh, Wrexham Johnny Five, and um, he was having the exact same problem. He's also got Kyber, and he's got four Maestros in his, and he's, he's wired them up slightly differently. But essentially, um, to the Kyber, it only sees two maestros. So to, to all intents and purposes, he's got the same setup as me. But he was finding the same thing. He would uh, tell it to do something. J5 would sort of kind of like make a noise and the lights would light up. But he none of the servos would move, so none of the heads would move. The head wouldn't move or anything like that. And then the whole thing would crash. He was getting really frustrated with it. Uh, he spent the whole weekend just sort of like on and off looking at it, but also trying to enjoy the weekend. And then um, he got home and found out that the there was something wrong with the, the RX line. So there's me thinking, oh god, I've got the same. Yeah, there's me thinking, oh god, I've got the same issue. 
and then actually it turns out that the maestro documentation is wrong so on the maestro on the sorry the maestro the kyber documentation is wrong so can you see the wire there the with the white wire that's going up this way that's a three wire servo connector so you've got white red and black black being ground and then the other two being tx and rx now the kyber documentation says that tx was the top one and rx is the middle one so I, I wired everything accordingly to follow that path uh going to you know so tx going to rx on the on the maestro and then splitting off up to here which goes to the slip ring which goes to the dome tx so doing all that and and getting the same effect as dave so i had a quick chat to dave and um he said oh have you double checked your tx and rx lines I'm like, oh yeah yeah check that loads of times and um, he said yeah the documentation's wrong Oh, swap the TX and RX lines over, um, just there, just to swap the red and green over, and everything springs to life. So if you're going to do Kyber, um, and they haven't updated the documentation by then, bear that in mind, that the, the, TX, the, the, the Maestro, uh, sorry, that the Kyber labels their TX and RX the wrong way around. Um, just something to bear in mind. So as you can hear, the print is going, it's printing the, the top hinge, so... Um, when that's finished, I'm, when that's finished, I'm going to do a uh, a new line of nylon, you know, on there sealed, going back. It, it'll give me plenty of length to bring it back into the droid. I'll take that hinge off, uh, so which means taking this bit off, and um, sort the servo out. I'm going to do one door at a time, so I don't get myself completely confused as to which hinge is which. And then when we come back, hopefully. The doors will open further. That's the end goal, anyway. Uh, oh, incidentally, this when this does open, you know, it's not stuck. And it does open. That's got plenty of throw on it. That's that's fine. That's as far as it goes. That's as far as I want it to go. You know, there's, e there's even slightly more on it. But um, so yeah, it's just getting stuck there. So I'll probably look at that in a few days' time. And I, I want to get this, the animations working. Then I'm probably just gonna leave it for a while oh yeah redo the paint and, and lacquer it and then, I'll, and then i'll be done so yeah as i said when i come back these servers should be changed that was a long ramble wasn't it anyway see you in a bit okay so i've done the one door uh, so i've taken the old hinge off and put a new hinge on with a new piece of nylon uh that's now in the furthest position the server would go you can see the New string of nylon there. I'm going to trim that in a minute. So if I so the door is currently closed. If I push that to the open position, the door goes that far. If I go all the way to the other end of the servo throw, you can see the door opens further, which is better. That's what I wanted to be able to get the eventually get the arm things out. So put that back to the closed position again. Uh, I'll tighten that up a bit more and I need to put that screwed on the bottom again uh, and then trim that. I think I'll trim that once I'm absolutely sure that's correct so I don't want to do this again. Um, and I just need to repeat for the other door. And yes, you have to take the whole gear ring off in order to be able to get to these screw holes here. Otherwise, I wouldn't need to. Oh well, right. Next door. And that's the other one done. Uh, that was a lot quicker, probably because I knew what I was doing. And the last time, the last time I did these hinges, this one was a pain. But actually, that one went through quite easily compared to the other one. Um, yeah. So again, that's pushed as far back as possible, and that's the closed position. And then if I push the servo here, that's just just over halfway. There we go. That's full, and that's more than enough to get an, uh, a utility arm or a interface arm or something like that to pop out of there. Um, put one of Tim's mods in there for that. Um, so yeah, I think I can cut those down to shape and put that back on. Although if I'm going to be replacing the utility arm, is it worth putting this back on yet? Because I just have to take it off again to get to this screw here. But the utility arm's not ready, so... Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll put the top back on. 
As you, you see this now, I can wait. Um, God, this is getting dirty. The, the wrong type of dirty weathering. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'll put the top back on. And I'll have a go at programming it, and then we'll see how it looks. Hopefully, that's fixed the issue. If only I'd read the instructions the first time around properly. Wouldn't be able to do this again, would I? There you go, there's your takeaway tip. Read the instructions twice before you start screwing stuff in. Because I read it as upright, as in like that, was the closed position. Which, thinking about it, wouldn't give you enough throw to open the doors. But, yeah, live and learn. Um, yeah, so I think that's all the servers working. So that those two are now calibrated properly, I think. Uh, the dome tilt works. Although at the moment I've got it working on the up and down on the joystick um, to sort of give me a bit of free, a bit of free animation to uh, animate his head tilting, but that seems to be interfering with then it doing a programmed animation. Um, I'm not sure how to just sort of disable that when it's not in use, but um, I, I'm sure I'll work it out. I mean, worst comes to worst, it just doesn't become part of an animation. And yeah, the utility arm. The servo throw is fine, it's just getting stuck here. I might have to put something non-stick there just to just in the meantime. You, you can see now it's you can see it's getting stuck right there. Um it feels sticky now. I have to go wash my hands again now. Um yeah, so I'll get the top back on and then um I'll give it a go at programming it and then we'll hopefully be able to trigger some animations. Decided to reprint the gripper arm while I was at it. Um, this is the live action version, as in Mike's version. Um, so that'll be done in about four hours, four and a half hours. And then um, eventually that'll get glued together, sanded, primed, and replace the resin one. Right, so these have been primed. I've sanded them and primed them. Um, ignore those, this is something else. Um, yeah, so they've been primed, they've been primed, and then that get blasted with silver and done with that dirty aluminium. And then those are a combination of silver and white, so need to work out which combination it is. Um, yeah, so I let that dry, and then I'll uh, give it a spray with aluminium. Right, those are painted, and the grippers, nippers are glued on. Does that fully dry properly and then I can glue those onto the body and replace the current resin arm with this one and hopefully it being a lot lighter it shouldn't struggle so much. The uh, next thing you see it these should be as glued on. So as you can see, I've got Chopper back together. Um, he went out on a, a little event on Sunday. Today is Tuesday. Um, and he just did an event with R2, so they both of them went together. So this is Chopper's first test run outside the DB UK. And to be fair, he performed really well. The only thing that did not perform very well was the transmitter, because I ran out of batteries. So he started playing up, um, mainly because the transmitter is sending wrong information. And uh, as you saw in the video, that's getting stuck. So I had a quick chat to Mike about it, and he said, actually, the cutout for the live action chopper is different to the animated chopper, so this arm doesn't really fit. So what I'm thinking of doing is printing the arm yet again, and I'm not sure, quite sure how I'm going to do this, but basically I need to get this bit over here and maybe extend this bit out so it comes across there and then maybe shrink uh, here slightly just so it doesn't quite, you know, only, only by about half a mil, just so it doesn't catch. Although actually I must admit that doesn't seem too bad, it's just this bit. So it's either that or I just shave it on the, shave it on the back and that's all it needs, just a little bit. And that will get, you know, just get past like that. It's still scraping there, but uh, R2's does that as well. Um, as you also noticed um, where I primed them, I've now stuck these down. Um, so they're all these 
dark gunmetal bits need to be um, uh, sort of rub and buff slightly to get to bring out the edges and I still need to paint like these bits yellow yeah yellow and orange I think off the top of my head um, I was having another think about this leg and I probably will repaint it dark grey probably just primer grey not sure when it's no no real no real rush um, what else yes he's getting bashed up I've already started putting the silver sharpie in places so that's kind of good weathering so let me take chopper's head off and then we'll discuss the inside of the body slightly right so we've got the head off and immediately you can see there's been a bit of an upgrade in that I've now got the um, slip ring wires protected I've also upgraded the slip ring this is now a 12 wire slip ring it's the same size as the six wire just about I had to reprint this bar to make the, the plug hole slightly bigger I could have drilled it but um, Honestly, it's quicker just to print it. Uh, so now I've got 12 wires. I've got four positive, four negative, and then my TX and RX for the Maestro, and I've got two spare for future use. Um, likewise, plugged into there. Uh, the reason I went up to 12 wires is because I was doing some calculations. It's two amps per wire. I only had two wires, so I was only at four amps. Um, the servos and the lights all moving at the same time doing something would quite easily break that four amps so this is now going to give me uh, two four six two four six it's going to give me eight amps I don't know why mass failed there so I've got eight amps going up to the dome that should be plenty uh, I also had to resolder the inside of here so I've put some heat shrink on there and you've got a lovely bit of super glue damage but it still works I think yeah, the contacts are fine, it still works. Uh, anything else I've done in here? No, I've had to tighten up uh, that block, it come loose in there, so I just had to tighten up the screw up that's under here. Spin it around. Where's it gone? I had to tighten that screw, that nut up, and sort of just strengthen it, so that means that the head wobble works better. I've still yet to cut these wires. I want to be absolutely positive that they're the right place before I cut any more wires. And that's pretty much it. There's nothing else on Chopper I need to do apart from doing the animations and making sure the servos work. Um, everything else on Chopper works. Oh, the only other thing I do need to do, and this is more of the Maestro configuration side, is create some more noises because at the moment all chopper's noises are grumpy and yes i know chopper is grumpy and that's right but at this event on sunday there were a lot of there was um who's he talking to uh, disney princesses were there he was talking to them and they were asking him all these questions and i was trying to get into answer and all he was getting was like <laughs> it sounded really grumpy and really like he didn't want to be there so, yeah, I know Chopper's grumpy, but sometimes he, he does do happy things. And I know there are happy sounds in there, so I need to start programming more of those in. Um, and that's just that's just because I haven't done them yet. Um, so that's pretty much it, I think, so far. Um, give me a second and we'll have a look at the head. So let's talk about the inside of here. I've um, got to be careful how far I tip it back because of the aerial. So this rat's nest of wiring, which we've seen before, um, I noticed that the ladder light wasn't working properly, or rather the ladder light was working, but the the two uh, main eyes weren't lighting up properly, or one or the other. If I plug it in, if I plug power into the nano there, it would work, or rather the ladder light would work, but the lights wouldn't come on. So I did some hunting around what was going on and I suddenly realised that I was powering the main eye lights, as in like their power, was coming off the nano. So I'm trying to drive the LEDs off the nano, as well as trying to do the signal for both the LEDs and the ladder lights. As soon as I moved the power off the nano and into one of these connections, everything worked fine. 
that was about an hour of messing around of code and trying to work out what the problem was and in the end it was just power uh the only thing i really still need to do in here is apart from trying to find some way to tidy that lot up is all these wires here hang down so i need to put some cable tidy in there to just sort of attach them to the, the top of the dome um other than that there's not anything else i've done in here uh obviously this is the other side of the slip ring magnetic adapter um the only thing i am finding is I don't know if it's these connectors as such, or maybe just the gauge of the wiring. Um, but occasionally, or, or it might also be just the amount of wires that are up here and how close they are to the door. Um, that sometimes the wiring for the LED light, uh, the ladder light, needs a bit of a kick. You know, just sort of touch the wire slightly in a couple of places and just sort of re seems to reseat everything. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. I don't, say, I don't know if it's these these Wago connections or if it's a, a wiring connection here or I don't know the weight of these pulling it down. So just something I have to keep in mind when I turn chopper on that that might happen. It's an easy fix. It's just a tad annoying. Uh, the next stage really is to start getting these servo animations working and on the body as well. Um, I'm missing on the body, the only really thing that can animate is that and the two doors at the moment. Um, so it's relatively simple. Uh, that one's a bit harder, especially as I've got the periscope, the doors and the arms. It's a lot to program in. But something to mess around with in slow time. Um, I mean, really, I want to try and get that arm fixed. Something I didn't mention about the old arm when I took it off is uh, where the resin here which is still sticky and it's bumped up slightly I just noticed it's raised might be why it keeps sticking anyway um, where the resin here was leaking here it's actually flowing you can just maybe just about see it, it's all flowing down there and then along here and into here as well and it's getting stuck here so the pin that goes through here was glued in to all intents and purposes which means that was glued in or rather the old version of this was glued in um, I had to physically break the arm into little pieces to get it apart to be able to get it to get to the pin enough to be able to remove the screws that are attached through here to get the whole thing apart to put this arm on um, so there's no way I was reusing that arm I didn't intend to reuse the arm but there's no way I could give it to anybody else to use or keep it for any other reason it was trashed it was in little pieces it went in the bin um, as I suspected, this is a lot lighter and seems to move a lot freer. Possibly because it's not covered in resin at the bottom as well, but there you go. Um, oh, the only other thing I've done is I've cut that to length, uh, the hose, and I've hot glued it here rather than relying on the magnet. And that's just friction fit, so that's just pushed in. Um, I might need to chop it slightly more just to bring that curve up a bit, but actually I think that probably works as is. I have to have a look at the reference pictures. I think maybe this bend needs to come in slightly. And the only way to do that is to chop more of this off and just push it in. Um, ultimately, I think that's probably the better way to get rather than relying on magnets. Um, and there's nothing else I can talk about, really. The only other thing I can say is the event... I did a couple of days ago. I was dead impressed on how well these tyres performed. Uh, it was driving on a car park, a pitted car park. It wasn't smooth tarmac, it was pitted, it was old. Bumpy as hell. And Chopper drove fine. Um, our two on the other hand <laughs> struggled. Uh, but yeah, that tyre, I cannot rate a 3D printed tyre enough. That performed really well. So I was dead chuffed on that. Um, so yeah. so yeah, I think that's it for Chopper at the moment. Um, I, I know I said I was going to do some animations and show you on the video, but honestly I've got other bits to do, um, including that and the PK meter and that sort of thing. So I think at the moment I'm going to leave Chopper here as he is and just sort of get the, just work on things in slow time and maybe do a catch-up video once I've finished it all and show what I've done. Um, and yeah, so 
thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.